sex, it's a hot topic, and uh, everybody's doing it. Well, not everybody. Some people have given up on it. That's what this show's about. This is Giving Up on Sex with Josh Jack and B. Lion. Yeah. Now, um, I think the last time we did this show was about two weeks ago. We usually do it every week, but I think we skipped it. And I think since last time, I had a weird uh, blowout with the bouncers, which has been a main part of this show as far as this one bar I go to. I try to go I go to the same places because I don't like to pay covers, you know. So one of the free bars that I go to, it's it's not as good as it used to be. I explained before in the show that, you know, uh, it used to be like girls would grind on you and it was lots of girls and now it's like more hipster and more girls don't really dance with guys as much and I don't and I don't try anymore as the show called Get Up on Sex. So one night I'm getting ready I think two weeks ago I think I'm getting ready to go inside the bar and one of the black and one of the black bouncers, uh there's like two of them there. And uh, one of them goes, uh, man, I was just thinking, when are you going to get laid? And I was like, never. And he started laughing. He was like, yeah, I know. And I was like, yeah, I was like, that's all you guys want to do, right? And then I was wearing like a new, I bought a new suede, uh, a new velvet suit jacket. Um, that has nothing to do with anything, but I was wearing, and, and, the, guy, and the guy, and I don't know why, I think I bought it because the movie uh, Coming to America. I don't know if you, if you, if those you've never seen Coming to America, you must not be a fan of comedy. I feel like that's one of the, uh, best comedies, but anyway, uh, Eddie Murphy dresses up like a bunch of characters, and one of the characters is this old white guy, and he starts touching this person, one of the Africans, uh, whatever their their fabric or their clothes. He goes, "This is beautiful. What is this velvet?" So that made me laugh. So I bought a velvet suit jacket, and it's real soft, you know. So anyway, one of the bouts is like, "Oh, that's a nice suit jacket and stuff." I go, "Thanks." And then they start like getting into me, like roasting me. The one guy was like. So like, what do your parents think, man? Like, what do you, I said? What are my parents? I was like, well, I'm going to a bar. Why are you, why are you bringing us up? And then we started arguing. I started saying like dumb shit and everything. Like he was like, he was like, uh, so like, what, what do you do for work? And I said, um, well, I work in a mail room. He's like, do you, he's like, did you go to college? And it's like in my head, I'm like, do they do this to every single person that comes? I, I haven't even went in the bar yet, and they're like interviewing me. Same guy who's, is this the same guy who's always telling you like? You know, I want to make your dick my dick, and you should get laid. <laughs> well, the guy never said, I want to make your dick my dick. He said, like, I want to get you laid. I, I was quoting that from the 40-year-old Virgin movie. But, yeah, uh, there's, like, there's, like, there's four bouncers. So those two are, the, the, those two are like, the guys who are kind of dicks to me. And then there's this tall Asian bouncer that actually Will Fitz met once because he works. We went to a salsa night, and he works there, too. He's he's nice about it. Like, he will kind of get on me a little bit, but he he's introduced me to girls before, and he tries to, like, help me. And then there's this other black bouncer. Who's, he's only there once in a while, and he's just usually high. And he just says, "What's up?" And he might say, "Like, hey, you, you, you talk to girls and stuff." But he doesn't. He's not mean though. So these two guys, or the main two guys, were kind of dicks. So uh, he goes. So they asked me, like, "Did you go to college?" I say, "Yeah, I have a degree in IT." And one of the bouncer goes, "Oh my fucking god, man, you got a degree in IT and you work in a mailroom." I said, well, I said, you don't know my situation. It took me six years. My parents would have helped me. And he was like, that shit don't matter, though, man. I said, well, I'm trying to tell you why. Most people, they did it in two years. I had to do it myself. He's like, yeah, but you had to bring that up, man. And I'm like, we're like arguing. And I'm like, I'm like what? The? I just want to go inside. Like, it's not that they won't let me inside. But I'm like, I just wanted to go inside. But it was kind of dead. Now I'm arguing with these, you know, two guys. And then one of them said something about, he's like, I always see you here with guys. Is that what you into? So they accused me of being gay, and they started laughing. I said, well, no. I said, but I actually go here by myself. I, I, well, every once in a while, a guy would talk to me or something, but I don't I don't hang out with other guys. And then uh, the one guy, I, and, I, and I said to the other guy, I was, like, I was like, dude, you're a bouncer in a bar. Okay, you're better than me. He's like, no, nah, man. And then he was like, yeah, but he's got another job, though. I said, so what? You're working in a bar. I was like, okay, so I change water coolers and printer paper, and you mop up piss and throw up. Okay, so what? Shit, that's great. You said that to him? That's yeah. Fun. I was wondering if you were going to say something back to him. Yeah, that's perfect. Bill Miller, are you on the show? Yeah, is this the fake radio? This is the fake radio uh, podcast. That's amazing. I hear you oh, guys are giving up you? on sex still. Yeah, we're doing giving up on sex. Be lying. You know, he hates it when you call in my line. <laughs> oh, he's on you. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's, you, what's well, the it's the that? first phone number on the fucking on list. So what, what can I say? What, what's that be lying? So why does he do that? Does it sound better on your end? Yeah, Bill, why do you do that? Do you do it just to torture poor B-Lion? 
Well, I do it because it's the first phone stoner? number on the list. So, okay, okay so whatever you know when you get yeah. a menu, yeah, I see from a pizza place, <laughs> and they have you know more than one phone number. So Bill brings up a good point. It's based on my fault. He says the reason why he calls it because it's the first phone number on the YouTube thing. So I put my phone number first, your phone number second, and then my second line third. So he says it's like a pizza place. I, he calls the main line first. So I guess he wants me to change it to uh, the put your number first. You know it, I mean? I'm, it's just a, a thing yeah, of habit, you know. Works. Also, um, Bill, I'll if hang up and do phone, it the other way. I'll, I'll, I'll do the second phone, phone number book, if that's all right. And then you'll know for the future. <laughs> so, Bill, are you going to call in to be Lions Line or are you going to stay here the whole show? Well, I might as well do that. Goodbye, everybody. All right. So, he's going to call now your, uh, your thing. So, yeah. So, uh,. So anyways, yeah, so I was like, okay, I was like, yeah, you work in a bar and I work in a mail room. He's like, no, man, I really don't think I'm better than every anybody at all. I was like, well, that's what you sound like. And then he was like, I'm not trying to be a dad. I was like, you fucking sound like it. And then the other bouncer started laughing. And then I was like, all right, what are we doing here? I was like, you just want to argue all night? He's like, no, we're trying to help you. I said, no, you're not helping me. And then I said, all right, guys, look, I was like, I'm going to the salsa bar. It's dead in here. I'll be back later. And then the, the Asian bouncer came out. He was like, damn, you guys chased him away before he even came in. And... um so I, I told myself I want to go back there uh, anymore, but then I went back there the next night because, as I said, there's not a lot of places to go to without paying five bucks to get in. And the uh, bouncer did – one of the bouncers who was kind of roasting me did try to introduce me to, like, this girl that goes there. And uh, But, yeah, so it's weird. But it's like if that, even if that's tough love, it goes back to what I said before that these guys are just uh, – as Bill Miller said, they're bored on the job. And uh, they just they're 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 way too in my personal life, and and they keep. Do thinking, you think they're actually trying to help you? Do you think they're just trying to be dicks, or they're actually trying to help you? I think yeah. more hey, more. How's it going? Hey, Bill. I think they're more trying to be dicks, and they're trying to help a little bit. I think they want me to get like it's just just like Bill Miller said. They're bored on the job, and they kind of want me to just entertain them, which is fine, but. I, I just want to be. I just want to dance, you know, hang out, meet people, drink and stuff. I don't want to approach these girls and, you know, stuff. And these guys, they just, uh, they won't leave it alone, you know? You tell them to, do you tell them just, like, fucking mind your own business? Yeah, I, t I think I told them, I said, like, can you guys just pretend you don't know who I am and just, like, let me, because this one, uh, black bouncer, he used to not say nothing for me for years. He would just nod and give me a fist bump. And then out of the blue, I think months ago, he would just say, like, man, we noticed you come here by yourself and you leave a lot. What's your what's your situation? Like, why? And I said, well, I really don't try. You know, I just want to. And then that's how it started. And then once in a while, then he started asking me questions. And then they, I guess I came there too much, you know, and they started like, uh, you know, thinking it was fun to just pick me apart, you know. Yeah, that's really strange. Like, they're implying that you're gay. I just don't understand. Like, I guess it's weird, but like from a customer service perspective, that's horrible. If they're chasing you away. <laughs> well, I don't or, buy drinks there. I mean, I usually drink somewhere else. I guess that's why. Maybe I don't know. Maybe oh, that's... <laughs> just go there and don't buy a drink, and then. Well, there's a lot of people who just go to the dance and stuff. You know, because on Friday and Saturday nights you get away with that because you know it's crowded. So maybe that's their maybe that's their marketing scheme. You know, like hey, this guy's not buying a drink. Let's. Let's make him uncomfortable so he doesn't go back yeah, there anymore. I know that you were going there and not buying drinks. Well, they don't know if I'm buying What's drinks. What's your favorite but... song to dance to? What's that, Bill? What's your favorite song to dance to? Is there like a particular song where it's like, oh, this is it, and it's doing yeah. it right for you and 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 like majority of the people there on the dance floor? Well, there's a few. There's many songs. You know, there's one song, uh, "Genuine's Pony." That song's hard not to dance to. Even if you're a white person with two left feet, I mean, uh, you might have heard it before. Um, even if you don't recognize what it sounds like, but that song and stuff, and there's a few songs. But I, don't... I don't know. Can we play songs on here? You can uh, be lying if just, you want to. Just play a clip, like uh, bring us to the middle. Let's hear the chorus. All right, be lying. Why don't you do that? Why don't you go to Genuine's Pony? Genuine's what? Genuine, and the song's called Pony. Genuine Pony. Oh, I see it. It's spelled ridiculous. Yeah, it's, it's a black Genuine way. Genuine <laughs> Pony. Yeah. Right. And go, to like, go to like a minute in. 
there's nothing softer than a butterscotch pony. (laughs) Some ad for this guy, never pay for electronics. All right, one minute in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's it. So yeah, I, how often they play this song? They play that song almost everywhere you go because it's an old. They call it an old school banger, and uh, it's hard to not dance to that song because when you hear it, all the girls know it and stuff, and guys use it to try to grind on girls' buttholes. And uh, it's uh, oh, it's such that song. It's that song. It's one of those songs that you know. It just even if you like I said, it's hard. It's hard not to dance to just because you see everybody reacting to it, and uh, it's a good stripper song. I mentioned you know. Just all the girls shake their big butts to that song. That beat and that rhythm, and I'm just a bachelor. Grabs you by the soul, and just like mm. huh. I'm totally listening to that song when I'm on mushrooms. Yeah, Is this, I'm hearing it, Bill. No, I heard it before. You just didn't probably recognize the title, and because the, the title is spelled like a fucking black champagne. Genuine. Genuine. So, do you find that after the Me Too movement that it has changed people's behavior at bars? Like, are, are is there less grinding or less guys hitting on women? Well, no. I still see like a few makeouts and stuff, and I still see guys trying. To, I think it's just. I think the what really changed it for me going to the same places is the hipster thing because the bar I'm just talking about. It, when I first went there, not to say that. It was like this every week because it wasn't. I got my first few makeouts there, and the girls approached me to, like, uh, they kissed me and stuff, and it was just really easy. And there was lots of girls there, and for years it was like that. Then once this whole hipster thing, like, with the whole fish town thing happened, and you know where all the hipsters and stuff, it kind of changed. And they're not the same as these other girls. Like they're not like some of them are party girls, but they don't grind. You know, they don't really uh, approach and stuff. They just like to just uh, not shampoo their dirty hair. And uh, wear checkered yeah, shirts. Those, yeah, you know what? More, those girls, uh, they're, they're totally my scene. <laughs> <laughs> I totally get those girls. That, that's me. <laughs> yep. And uh, those kind of girls, uh, you know, and stuff, they're not the type they really grind on a guy's penis. or uh, They might dance with a guy, but they don't really, it's not like what it was. So I think that changed the whole hipster thing. It's not cool, man. So are hipsters more reserved, like not as free to dance? Because a lot of them are just like... They dance, but they don't. You know, you you grew up smoking pot and you really just don't give a fucking shit about like the physical contact thing. You're like, you know. Man, when I smoke weed, Mm -hmm. I'm never, I'm never more hornier than when I get high. So I don't, I don't really (laughs) get. Yeah, I probably because I jerk off before I get high. That's, oh, you gotta jerk off after you get high. It's oh uh, yeah. It's, you've never it's fun. done. Have you ever done that? I jerk off all the time. It's <laughs> um yeah. I kind of but I do it like like I only do it for two minutes. Like I try to get it over work o- over like paperwork. You know, like <laughs> sign a check. You know. Yeah, uh, I, I think you're missing out. I think you should not jerk off for like a month and then get high and then jerk off. And I think you'll have a great oh, time. I might do that. Now, Josh, you mentioned something about you mentioned something about if there was a girl who smoked weed, you would think about getting into it. What is is that still your stance on that? Yeah, I mean, like, because uh, I see ads like that on Craigslist, even though I don't reply to them. Like, girls are looking for, like, a 420 buddy. But I think what they're looking for is a guy who has weed. You know, right. a guy who can just get them free weed, I guess, pretty much. But, you know, I, like I said, I would I would get into it, but um, I just never got into it my whole life. And even when I first started at the cabaret, back when there was a smoke box, you know, everyone would go in Rick Roboten's car and uh, blaze up, you know, five or six people or, or Dan Mahan's Jeep, whatever. It was tempting. Because I felt left out because I would just be sitting there by myself and everyone was like, oh, we're going to go smoke. And they would invite me and I never went. 
But I just feel like it's just too late now. I went so long in my life without it. Why start now? There's just no point, really. You feel like you're yeah, too Yeah, there really is no point. I, 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 there's no I, point I at know. this point. What it's, if it chilled you out to the point where you just didn't, you cared even less about uh, hooking up with people? It's like I smoke weed and then my, my weed face is sexy. And then girls are like, whoa, you're hot. Where have you been? And I'm like, yeah, I'm just high. <laughs> hey guys, want to get high? Uh, vibe off. <laughs> Are you saying that you think Josh gives off a rape vibe? <laughs> I think everyone, I think all guys give off a rape vibe, but whenever they're high, it just like wipes them clean of that shit. Interesting. Come on, guys, let's get high. So when you, you know, go, like, yeah, I don't know. You okay. know. Josh, do you find that you're nervous when you go into a bar? Do you still have nerves, or are you just totally relaxed? No, I was never nervous. When I was 21 years old, I I went to a nightclub by myself, this big nightclub. That was the first time I was nervous because um, this kid I used to be friends with in high school, I talked about him before the show, he was was this tall, good-looking guy, and girls wanted to fuck him, and all he had to do was just walk over, and he was a pussy. And uh, he he's we went to a club and he didn't want to do anything. He was he was terrified. And then I, then I he told me he didn't want to go back again just because the bouncer gave him a hard time about his shirt because he was wearing his long baggy shirt. He had to throw his his white t shirt away. So he was like a pussy. He was like, I'm not going to go to clubs anymore. I was like, just because of that one guy. So I went back by myself and I was only nervous because it was kind of like in a ghetto area. This is like back in the where all the clubs were in Spring Garden. Uh, and there was like there was like a project around there where people get robbed and stuff. So I was nervous. So I went up there on a Sunday night by myself, and I was nervous walking up the five blocks. And then it's, I went there by myself, and I got and then I was there, and I was like, "Holy shit, I'm in a club by myself." Not that anybody it matters because you know it's it's such a big place. And I actually did a, I actually made more approaches than I did hanging out with him. And I did like three approaches, whatever. And I was there for a few hours, and I left, and it was great. But that was that was the only time I was nervous, just because uh, I felt like uh, I can get jumped or something more for my safety. That's so th- actual nerves, like understandable fear, because there's actual danger there. Yeah, but never nervous because of girls. Because I, I I was approaching since I was eighteen. I used to go to Franklin Mills because I wasn't in college, and uh, I that was the only place we can go. And I would walk around and harass girls. I guess. Well, it wasn't harassed, but I guess it was because it was kind of creepy. You had to follow them around the mall <laughs> just to talk to them. It was so creepy. Like You had to wait for them to pass by and then turn around and go, hey, let's follow these girls and try to talk to them. And then they would leave. You you know? have a girl say, <sighs> oh, I noticed you've been following me. No, but uh, they were surprised, I guess, when uh, I finally talked to them or whatever. They were just like, this guy's trying to get pussy in a store. What's wrong with this guy? You ever just ask for pussy? Yeah, I actually have. Because I read this black guy's book, and uh, he has this pro- he has this thing called Mode 1 where you let the woman know what you're thinking, and he explains why. He says, because, you know, they can't manipulate you and stuff, because and all this, he gets all, the whole details about it. So I actually have said before that I just wanted to fuck. And it's funny to see the reaction, because they actually laugh, and they're actually shocked. They can't. There's nothing they can really do, because 90-something percent of guys would never just say that. All right, so let's say, and have you done this? Did you do this in the mall? Did you do this at a bar? Um, I did it. Actually, I did it a few times in a bar, mostly. And there was a few times where I was actually doing it during the daytime, too. Like I was talking about sex with this like middle-aged chick. Uh, and I remember at Rittenhouse Park during the daytime. It was like Saturday, 11 a.m. And I said, is it true that redheads are the best in bed? And she laughed and said, yeah, it is. And we started talking when she was married or something. And Sorry. Was there a situation where you just went up to a girl and the first thing out of your mouth was, I would like to fuck you? No, I haven't like, done that. I was picturing when you said that. Right. I bring it up in the conversation, but there have been a few times where uh, one thing I do realize, if a chick has really big tits or really fat ass, if you actually go up and say, hey, you have you have giant tits, oh my god, or you have big ass, they actually love it. Like I've I've done that maybe ten times, and not one time has a girl slapped me. Like I thought, you, every guy thinks, "Oh my god, I'm gonna get slapped." Or anything. they they know. I mean, they when a girl has their titties hanging out, they're leaving the house thinking, "I'm gonna get some free drinks tonight." 
everyone's going to be staring at their tits and then the ones who pretend to get up, the ones who get upset are the ones pretending like they're pull their top up like oh you know like they're offended it's like yeah right like you you didn't think anyone's gonna look at your giant titties you know like everyone's looking at How about them now though i mean i feel like harvey weinstein that and the me too movement has changed it like i wonder if you say something to a woman now if it would be a different reaction Hmm. I mean, it could be maybe in the workplace, maybe, but uh, but as far as bars go, I feel like that's always going to be what it was. That's always going to be the whole bar and nightclub was designed of girls go out for attention and guys go out to get try to get laid. And girls <laughs> know that guys want to get laid, and that's why they dress like sluts and they fucking you go to these douchebag bars packed with horny guys and they fucking act stupid and they do all that. And that's why I'm just like. I like to just hang out, but that's why I don't really approach anymore because I feel like they have once again a chip on their shoulder. What's that? Because they, because uh, they know guys want to fuck, and then they just they just have this attitude, and that's why I'm. That's why I, I according to Black Balancers, I'm gay. I don't approach anybody. I'm just like hanging out. Now that would be an interesting idea if you <laughs> if you were like a character, like almost like a gay character, and you would just talk to women in a very effeminate way. And see if they were more open to you. Yeah, I remember years ago, this is a funny thing happened. I went to this outdoor bar, and I was talking to these two girls, and this, this one guy was with him. I don't know if he was with one of them. And the conversation was actually going well, and I I made up something. I said, hey, I actually, I told him I was a dating coach or something. I was like, yeah, I'm a dating coach. Guys actually pay me. And then this guy was like, hey, man, I'm a cop. You better get the fuck out of here. I said, you're a cop? I was like, I was like well, what's the crime? What, what did I What did I do? How can you arrest me? He said, look, I'm just letting you know that you're harassing us, and I'm a cop, and I'm going to get my cop buddies up here. I said, well, why? I was like, yeah, but why won't you arrest me, though? And I think I was really drunk. This back when I just moved back in my parents' house, and I was really getting – I was drinking way too much. I couldn't even feel it. That's how drunk I was getting. And the guy was like, look, just get the fuck out of here, man. You need to get out of here. And he just pulled him away. He's just a weirdo. <laughs> Josh, you're a troublemaker. I am. I wonder if you've ever... See, I wonder if your troublemaker-type impulses like talk you out of getting laid. Yeah, because, because like, I just walk up to people and have conversations. That's against the law. Yeah, no, obviously that's ridiculous. <laughs> but I wonder if there's a situation where you're like... Are you ever like, look, I could play it cool, I could just be relaxed here, but I really want to say something. And so I'm going to say it, and then that's what makes, that's what ends the conversation. Well, no, I mean, because, like, I like nowadays what I do is I say dumb shit. Like, one of the bouncers heard one of my conversations, but I was trying to have fun. And he was like, you can't say dumb stuff like that. I said, I'm not trying to get laid. I'm trying to make myself laugh. I'm trying to have fun. I don't care. And, and so nowadays, yeah, I just say dumb shit. But that's just part of my personality. I'm trying to make myself laugh and all that stuff. But I'm not going to sit there. Most guys don't. When they talk to girls, they just try to be nor like, oh, just don't bring up sex. Like I said, like just be normal, just just be cool, just don't be indirect, be vague. And it's like fuck that shit because they'll waste your time. And then on top of that, they're fucking want they want you to buy them a drink or something. And it's like if they wanted to fuck you, then the conversation either way has to go somewhere. You can't just talk all night. It has to go somewhere. Whether it's like, hey, let's go back to my place or your place, or let's get an Uber, or let's get some pizza, or let's go to Seven Eleven and laugh at homeless people. It has to go somewhere. Either way. Yo. Yo. Yeah. If we got you, what, J Josh? What if we got you uh, on uh, an episode of Queer Eye for the Straight Guy? <laughs> Do you think that they'll solve all your problems? Do you think they'll like you know freshen you up? And... You know, my work with that show would be that they would give you too gay of an outfit, <laughs> and it would make the women. <laughs> run away from you. I don't know. I think they'll really dip into uh, Josh's personality and, and uh, you know, one of them might cry and, uh, you know, learn and, and like overcome some things and, and Josh will overcome some things and, and, uh, and, you know, everyone will be rooting for Josh in the end, you know, that'd be great. One of the bouncers told me I dress old. So I was like, I think that's what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to dress older. I'm going to get, like, some grandpa thrift store suit oh, jacket. Oh. <laughs> what was that, he referring to when he said you dress old? 
I don't know. Like I dress, like I just I dress mature. I was like, I said to him, "What should I wear? A SpongeBob hoodie?" <laughs> and he was like, "Well, no." Nah. But I said, "What, what do you, what, what should I wear?" All right. Um, any final thoughts on this sure. whole give it up on sex thing? Well, I'd be curious if you ever do that indirect game. If you ever do that in the future, I'd be curious to find out. I've done it, it before. Oh, you have done it before. I For years, I started. You... Well, the whole pickup artist thing, the show, the pickup artist, uh, came out. His whole method is indirect. So when I first went out, I was doing it, and the problem is, as I said before, it doesn't go anywhere. Like the only good thing about it is, yeah, the girl will feel like, oh, this guy doesn't. He's not trying to fuck me. He's trying to, you know, he, they don't feel like uh, you're coming off like a a sexual threat. But the problem is, is you know, you, you you're, you're so busy trying to do all this stuff that you know you can't even read the situation so like if they're uh they're wasting your time or they just want to talk all night like one guy did it and he was talking to the girl all night and the last minute she's like yeah i have a boyfriend i gotta go and she just left and wasted his whole night and it's like i'm not gonna waste my time so i said if you want to get laid just try to go for it i did it for i did it for like a year or so most me and these other guys none of us got laid out of it it was just uh all it does it buys you time but it doesn't go anywhere it's just uh Waste, what, do you think, what do you think about the three date rule? Well, that's why I, I always did. You, you go on three dates, and the third one is when you get laid. Well, I've done that before. At both times, I didn't get laid. Well, you know what? I think uh, dating is the best way of going at it. If uh, you want to, you know, this may sound like a little contrived and and Hank Hillish. Hill esque, but uh, I think the best way to sleep with a gal is getting to know her first and letting her get to know you. Till it's time to have sex. So what you're saying is you gotta flex if you want to have sex. That's right. You gotta you gotta flex your personality, brother. I see. Well, this has been some good stuff. If anybody has any. Uh, advice, if you want to call it that, or just if, maybe if you're a similar sad sap like me, and you want to just, well, I don't expect you to be on the show, but if you want to just read your story, email at tlndshow at outlook.com, we'll try to get to the bottom of this, and remember, there's no shame in giving up on sex, it doesn't make you gay, it may make you lame to certain people, certain guys out there who need women to make them feel like men, but I don't need a woman to make me feel like a man, I got chicken wings and stuff. This has been given up on sex. <laughs> <laughs>